Welcome back to 1876 Sports and Culture Podcast, a show focused on highlighting the illustrious Prairie View A&M University, the HBCU of Texas, by promoting SWAC and the HBCU experience, featuring your fellow PB Panthers, Roland Austin, Jay Cleasy, Big Mike Washington, three-time SWAC champ Gati Werema, former drum major HBCU band historian Shanetta Haskell, and Al Williams, driving the show from the hill. Please subscribe and follow us on social media at 1876 SCP. And don't forget, we do it for the culture. And welcome to the 1876 Sports and Culture Podcast. We are fancy now. Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> they never <Yeah>. gave so. <laughs> we high side now. So yeah. What was a Tiffany and High Cat? <laughs> there it is. There it is. So, you know, I, I want to get started. Uh, again, I'm, I'm your host, Al Williams. Uh, I got Jay Cleasy and Roland Austin. Shanette is going to join us here in a moment. But uh, I got one question for y'all. What's How that? swack are you? That you know, seems to be the question <laughs> going around all week. Hey, man. Is, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. I'm going to tell you how swack I am. Both my parents went to a swag school. My aunties went to a swag school. I stepped on a yard and for the first time in 1990. So I know I'm swag. Listen, my great grandmama went to a swag school, baby. That's how deep my swag hours are. Mm. (laughs) Rolling go back four generations on y'all. I'm (laughs) just (laughs) drop. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for all of y'all who are, are trying to figure out what we're talking about here, so there was some um, uh, spirited conversation or spirited discourse at the end of the Alabama State-Jackson State game, and uh, Coach Robinson seemed to insinuate that Coach Prime was not swack and that he was swack. So he didn't insinuate. It, he said it. He, he, yeah, he said it. It wasn't even insinuate. He just <laughs> said it. Swag. He said, <laughs> he said he ain't swag. I'm too, swag. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it took uh, JSU Nation about four hours, and we had a whole remix video of Coach Prime mm-hmm. talking about who is swag if I'm not swag. <laughs> and it, it, it was about a three minute video, and it was it was genius. I, I, I was watching the video and I honestly was like, Lord, I see what you have done for others. Can we just get some of that sauce at PV? You do something for us too. I was, I'm just saying, man, they were quick with it. Oh, I see boy. shirts. I see shirts all over. I see uh, PV is swag shirts. I see it all. I thought this was going to die by now. What do y'all think? Oh no, nah, man! People been talking about swag hours for years. You know, even back walking on yeah. the yard, you 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 tested a person based on how many swag hours they had. So you know what? This is just a resurgent of the energy that was once before. So you know, I'm swag I'm hours. here for it. I'm here for it. Make it a hashtag. Make it a whole movement. Who is swag? We <laughs> is swag. That's what's what's going on. So I'm with it. I, I was hoping PV wouldn't even jump in it, seeing as though we were the original founders of the swag. So it's kind of like. We ain't had to say nothing. Oh, really? We you good. Take the high ro- now you want to take the high road? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> hey, we we gonna lose the the uh, the marketing game. Like JSU got that on a lot. We we was gonna lose that game. So it was no use to, to, for for me. It was no value in us jumping into that that whole situation. Let's mind our business. That them folk business over there. No, yeah, we, we, can't, we cannot play. <laughs> we can't play. We we cannot not play. We got to get in the game. I'm sorry. It's too much energy, too much flow being tossed around out there. We better get in like playing double dutch. It's, look, I posted a thing on our uh, on our alumni page. Remember old guy from uh, Friday from Bros Barbecue? He said, wait a minute. I started this. <laughs> That's what we need to come out and say. Hold on. All y'all around there talking all that noise, man. We started this thing. We, we swag. The rest of y'all are are copycatters. Now, you know, we got homecoming coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm already trying to hydrate and, uh, you know, eating right so I can be ready and not uh, a casualty of uh, 
the Thursday you, night. You, you <laughs> eat your green leafy on. vegetables. That's right. That's right. <laughs> now, there seemed to have been a tizzy uh, on Twitter, on PV Twitter, because everybody was kind of confused about what the lineup was. We saw a lineup drop here, a lineup drop there. If you go on Twitter right now, just, just look at hashtag PV HC2K22. I mean, it's like 50 different flyers for 50 different events. What is going on? Man, it seemed like uh, there's some uncertainty. Somebody must not have signed a contract just yet. So, <laughs> so oh, you, if you make enough flyers out there, one of them got to be right, I guess. And everybody got pre-sales. Bruh, I'm sorry. I ain't never prepaid for a party in college. Explain it to me, please, because I just don't understand. Are these I mean, for parties? Understand, man. People need to well, listen. Y'all are all been in business. Y'all have all been in corporate America. You understand we gotta capitalize what our revenue what revenue projections will be. We can't go out here. <laughs> We got to make sure our bottom line is covered, you know. So, yes, everybody's going to do pre-sale. Everybody's going to say, hey, you must have your wristband. So you might as well go ahead, accept the trend. It is happening. You know, shout out to Day One Crew because they was one of the ones that talk a lot of crap. And they took a lot of crap, too, for having, yeah, we got to pay. Yes, you're going to have to pay your money up front. No, no sales at the door. <laughs> well, you know, once you've grown, I can understand. But in college, bro, we showed up and – Based on how many people it seemed like were inside, what the crowd was like outside, I would determine whether I was going to spend money or if I was going to go back to the old school, what goes in must come out. That's your decision right there. Who up in there? <laughs> he, he talking about he act like he wasn't, when they weren't kicking the door in at the baby door for it. Hey. <laughs> Joe, the one that would go to the back door and meet us back there. Damn right. <laughs> I was trying Once to you got you in there, you just scramble, door. took you a seat. <laughs> <laughs> Act like you belong. You run up in there, yeah. and then as soon as somebody see you, you just walk, you slow down and walk as though you've been up in there. Ain't nothing happening. Exactly. Now it's gonna be a busy weekend on the uh, the weekend of homecoming because PV, Texas Southern, and U of H all scheduled their homecoming the same weekend. If you flying in, forget about renting a car. It, it's it's gonna be tight unless you get there Wednesday. Yep. Um, you're going to be Ubering to the yard. So. Oh, I got one for you. Also, on that day, Texas A&M plays Ole Miss. 290, so about 290 to be is going to be a mess. Down. Yes, sir. Okay, so everybody needs to learn the route for 2920 to take the back way to get to the yard because 290 is going to be a complete mess. You might just spend a night Friday somewhere in your car on the yard. Do what you need to do. You might want to just Man. be there already. You might want to call I true. flew PVU again because that seems like that might be a better option this year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, but but can we do this? This is where we need to get that energy of uh, build a border wall. I want to put a wall up around PV during homecoming. I don't want no damn alien illegals coming up on my yard. If you didn't go to PV, if you didn't go to Bethune Cookman, which is who we're playing, then don't come around here. So you, you don't you don't want the uh Sam Houston folks coming no. down? If you, you don't, if you don't you, want no, no they're all want, gonna come, man. If you, you can't you can't say that, Joe. You can't say that. You can't listen. That's the beauty of our HBCU homecomings, is that it has always been y'all know y'all have traveled to other folks' homecomings. So that's the whole that's part of the culture. Because we now, got swag hours. <laughs> He said, we know how to act when we go to other folks' houses. Yeah. So. <laughs> hey, all I know is, <laughs> you know, the wife teaches at TCU, and uh, TCU Black Twitter got all the flyers up for PV Homecoming. Are you yeah. serious? Yes, man. Tell them, think, folks, don't come around here. Joe, do you think nah, all bro, the they folks at Howard and Hampton, they all went to Howard and No, man, those people are coming from all over. Well, if you're coming that. in, you got to pick a side. I'm going to need them to stop at the Walmart or the bookstore and get some PV gear. I we sure. need some Walmart fans like JSU and them. <laughs> Matter of fact, give them the directions to the Walmart Hempstead. Go buy mm -hmm. you a $15 shirt and then come on by. But don't come don't come around here with no foolishness. Don't act up. Leave your pistol at home. Don't cause no Please trouble. Leave all that. Oh, don't, don't leave trash on my yard. Keep your feet up off my grass. 
Mm, 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 mm. So keep your feet off my grad. There you go. That that's that's one uh, of our governance structure uh, rules. Whenever you come to a HBCU campus, you do not. I repeat, you do not walk on the grass. Period. Show up and not do it at PV. Ooh. And don't get hot when somebody tell you get up off my grass because it's going to go. happen. There you go. Now you know. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had an unfortunate incident on the yard, and uh, our thoughts and prayers are out to uh, one of our softball student athletes um, who uh, fell victim to a gunshot wound at an off-campus party. Um, my understanding is she is awake and and improving, uh, but that's that's, that's a parent's worst nightmare, man. Yes, indeed. Parents' worst nightmare. So our, our thoughts and prayers are with uh, Cadence and her family. Um, we are all Cadence strong. Yes, and indeed. I hope, I hope they found a sucker who did it too. Yeah, exactly. All right. So um, now, you know, we didn't have a game this week, but hey, this is voting season. So I wanted to kind of talk about, let's talk some politics here, man. This is, uh, we got a lot going on. I know I just saw the, uh, the um, senatorial um, debate in Georgia the other night and Man, man, they they what just kind of circus that? act is Come that? On, man. Let, let's give Come a public on. service announcement from here on out for the rest of the show. Pretty much, we talking politics ahead of voting season because we down here in in the South where a whole bunch of tomfoolery with with voter suppression is going down. So, you know, we know white fear is 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 driving uh, votes. It's driving the way people vote controlling your power controlling power of this country is control is is uh, driving the world the way folks vote which is the only reason why a village idiot such as Herschel Walker is being mentioned alongside uh Reverend Warnock in Georgia it's embarrassing yeah it, it is absolutely embarrassing um I think one of the curious things if you look at the slate the electoral slate across the south there is at least one black candidate for United States Senate in every one of the states in the South. Yeah, are yeah. we in re reconstruction time? <laughs> are we there yet? <laughs> I love it because it allows us to put our weight behind one of us and not have to choose the the worst of uh, the better of the two evils. And so let's 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 drop some names around here, man. Who we got? Who does the, the SWAT need to support? First off, you know we got to go to my man in Louisiana, Gary Chambers. He, he, he's yes, got sir. some of the best political commercials I have ever seen. Period. My man smoked the joint uh, 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 on, <laughs> on camera in support oh, of legalizing marijuana. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Say his name again. Gary Chambers, Louisiana. Yes, so you, right. you Southernites. You folks from Xavier, you folks from Grambling, y'all need to get it in. Vote for Gary Chambers. Hope you. I hope you're registered. I hope you ain't too busy thinking about the damn Bayou Classic and ain't registered to vote already. Get it done. Let's get it. Let's get it done. Uh, if we go over, uh, of course, in Georgia, we know we've got a, a contest be between uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock and uh, the... UGA Bulldog, um, like Herschel Walker, uh, who can have, I, I man, I, I hate to, he took, some hits, man. he took some hits and I don't like talking about nobody's mental state or anything like that, but man, let's do it. I don't come care. on, bro. Yes. How in the world? <laughs> I mean, that just, just say that it's not a, I, I, I want Republicans to miss me with, I'm a morals candidate. I'm I'm all about pro life. You ain't pro life. You pro birth. Because once I, they I was, get here, you don't want you don't you want don't Medicaid care. expansion. You don't want to take care of them kids. You don't want early childhood education. You don't want so you ain't pro life. You pro birth. Yes. First of all, second of all, you stand this man up who held a gun to his ex wife's head. I mean, the man he's got some issues, and I I just don't think. They follow the red hats into nominating this man as their candidate, and now it's too late, so they just got to go with it. 
But come oh, on, bro. They, they are they notorious for sticking with the party line. Yes. They will ride behind whoever they put out in the forefront. Um, I often, you know, a lot of times I struggle, especially when you have two African American candidates. I feel like that was their strategy in Georgia, right? Um, and then so now you got this divided uh landscape. But my God, man, come on, Herschel Walker. I I, I wanted to believe that hey, he had something good to Why? say. He, Why? he's not even he can't articulate his thoughts well. He's riding out on on a on a name that he had for himself. I'm sorry. Your 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 publicity and your um your celebrity can only get you so far, my brother. You must have some substance. He ain't our <laughs> Joe. He's a he's a damn I, coon. I ain't I ain't having it, man. Let me tell you something. Somebody. I know. I try, I try to watch my words. <laughs> no, man. I, that's, what I, that's why I was so, I was like, I'm calling. I really want to say white that. Christianity <laughs> is so compli- it, it is so. It's contradicting at times. I get it. Contradictory is not even a strong word, strong enough word. They would rather choose. So evangelicals, right? Supposedly, they choose a man who has multiple children by multiple women outside of marriage, multiple abortions, because that's supposed to be a good big issue for them, over a man who actually is married. It's a pastor. To, is a pastor <laughs> married to one woman. <laughs> That's good husband, good wife. I mean, definition of contradicting, man. That's my point. You, what you say you want, I put that in front of you, and you say, "No." Nah. I mean, listen. Uh, past President Obama went through the same thing. He gave them the candidate that they asked for. And they were like, "No, no, no." That's not what we want. So, so that goes he, back to, and I don't want to get it's too much oxygen to energy, but it goes no. back to white fear driving all of this. Power, the power struggle driving all of this. This ain't about no politics. This isn't about um abortion rights or anything else it's about power so it's definitely about power definitely you folks power. down all them hbcus in the state of georgia who we got morehouse Spelman, clark, clark atlanta Man, atlanta is the largest uh hbcu alumni population anywhere on the planet so y'all, we need y'all to get it in. We got to come out with big numbers here, man, because again, it's it's about power, and, and who is going to to have that power uh, moving forward. We know that there's a, a case before the Supreme Court that uh, it, with a six three supermajority right now, they're gonna re, they're gonna gut the Voting Rights Act some more. There's a case out of Alabama where uh, after the last census in 2020. Um, you know, most of that population growth growth was in African American uh, population. So African Americans are roughly thirty percent of the state. So we now have they knowledge. have, mm-hmm. yeah. Now they have. I, I think there's uh, seven congressional districts in in the state of Alabama, and African Americans get one, but they thirty percent of the state. So that's the case that's going before the Supreme Court at the end of November, and you know. We got Kentaji Brown Jackson in there, but it's only we only there's only it's a six three. So more than likely that's gonna go down and that is gonna have a ripple effect across every state. When you see this redistricting, that's how they consolidate power because they put all the black folks in Alabama in one district. So if you look at the geography of that district, come on, bro. It looked like a little kid on the big boy menu back in the day. Yeah. Let, let, let's 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 run through some more of these states though, man. Uh the good folks in, in in Jackson, Mississippi, y'all need to be voting hard. You want that new stadium, do you? Well, guess who's against the new stadium? The current governor. He's against your new stadium that you want to use to keep crime on campus. So you might want to get out and vote, uh, the state of Mississippi. We got we got our girl Val Demons down in, in Florida, don't we? Val Demons, former police officer, uh, running against uh, little Marco Rubio down there. Um, Funny thing, you know, the the state of Florida has two senators like everybody else, but when they just had Hurricane Ian get hit, you know, their two senators were pushing for relief for the state, but then neither one of them voted for it. How did how that work? Come on, Florida people, fam, you come on. Yeah. Florida Memorial, Edwin Waters, yeah, Bethune Cookman, Bethune Cookman, y'all 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 are going to want and need that recovery money. You don't need your, your your local politicians sending the money back to Washington, D.C., talking about we don't need no handouts. Get it done. 
How about that? All right, let's talk that? real quick about, about PV. So uh, the polling station, if you are registered to vote uh, as a PV student, uh, the polling location is the community center which is right next to the post office on FM, is that 1098? 1098. Uh, FM 1098. So early voting starts next week. Mm -hmm. So you can start going to vote. It's right there. You know, when it's your lunch hour, go and vote. Make your voice heard. Now, it is not officially on campus, but it doesn't get much closer to campus than the community center. So there is really no excuse for any PV student not to vote in this election. You got skin in this game. Trust. Yeah. All right, let's let's take a quick break and we're going to talk football real quick because we got an upcoming game. Let's hit that. Second and five. Cut. First to the hole up the middle. It breaks free. The 20. The 10. Touchdown, Prairie View. And it is Tristan Wallace. All right, so we've got Lamar coming up this weekend. What do you think? Well, we're going to look at, I guess a good place to look at is mutual opponents. We have one mutual opponent in Incarnate Word. Um, and they, Lamar University played Incarnate Word last week while we were getting trounced by Southern. Um, Lamar was getting trounced by Incarnate Word 31 to 14. I think we played Incarnate, well, excuse me, 56 to 17. Mm -hmm. um, our score in, against Incarnate Word was 31 to 14. So if you want to use that as kind of a measuring stick, you know, you can you may be able to use it, but not, you know, maybe, maybe not. Uh, it'll it'll give you some type of indication um, that the type of points that Lamar has allowed from their opponents. So uh, offensively, Lamar's giving up. They're, they're scoring 20 points per game. They've got 133 yards rushing per game, 206 yards per game. Uh, they give up about 20 points per game. They give up 139 rushing yards per game. They give up 300 passing yards a game. So the there's DBs an opportunity up. there for mm -hmm. us to make that quarterback to receiver connection. Um, it's a good game to to show improvement there against this team on the, uh, in passing. Um, they also allow 45% um, third down conversion and 25% uh, fourth down conversion. Um, so I think there's an opportunity for us to make a good showing down in Beaumont against Lamar. Um, good opportunity for us to have a strong game as we go into uh homecoming week right after that game so uh i'm excited to drive down and see our fellas play pv folks it ain't that much further of a drive and you go into purview it's just it's the opposite really direction not. so that's right that's right go straight across i-10 <laughs> you are correct all right so i, I hope this is a good tune-up game get us ready for homecoming uh lick our wounds a little bit uh we saw this weekend that southern uh beat Alcorn um, at home. So uh, right now, Southern is sitting atop the, the West Division. Um, there's still a lot of football to play, um, but it looks like it may end up being Southern representing the West in Jackson uh, come December. So let's talk, and that's what it looks like, but let's, let's talk about what would have to happen for Prairie View to make that return trip to Jackson. Like, so... so we, we got to beat out Southern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to beat Alcorn. Yeah. And Gramlin has to beat Southern at the Bayou Classic. Yeah. Which isn't looking real good right now. But the great <laughs> thing about rivalry games that we, as we talked about before, you never know what's going to happen, how the emotions will play once they get in that Superdome the day after or whatever, after, after Thanksgiving. You just never know what may happen. And you never know how, how uh, much the G – may have developed some of their their offensive skill talent by then that they, they didn't get the g back on their helmet g, man they got it back they got it back they did <laughs> have the g on yesterday was, i thought they're not going backwards that's just not the a you know because they lost the r <laughs> <laughs> i thought they Start were going the backwards back. <laughs> <laughs> they, they look good they look much better i won't say they look yeah. good they look much better against fam you yesterday uh much more uh competitive uh you can see a little spunk in them uh you know, they weren't letting uh, fam, you push them around. So that, that was actually a pretty good game yesterday. So you never know. Like you said, Joe, maybe that is the spark that Gramlin will lead the season with. Uh, a win in the Bayou Classic would be huge. Yeah. Yeah. So 
We need that game. We got. We have to beat Bethune Cookman. We have to win out. We got to beat Bethune. Yeah, yeah. We got to beat um, Alcorn. Then, then Valley. Don't forget about Mississippi Valley. Uh, so we got to win all three of those games. <laughs> yeah, you know. But we didn't play all of our guys against Valley last year. Uh, true. And so true. We we don't really control our destiny. We kind of do, but we don't. We need help from help from Grambling. So we shall see. Anything can happen. But three games left. In swag play, let's get it done. All right. With that, let's take a break and we'll go to band real quick. Hey, Shanetta, what's going on? Not much. So we did not have a game, so I don't have much to talk about with the band, with the exception of just this past week. And so what I'm going to do is take this time to talk about people and their feelings. Okay, so last week had a few people say, man, you seem to like Southern more than PV. It's not that. I like good music. I like a good band. So if you are only focusing on just the storm, you're missing out on a lot of entertainment, point and simple. So it says I'm a band historian. So let me tell you about my history. I picked up a clarinet when I was 11 years old, okay? The first time I heard a marching band was Texas Southern. Even though my dad went to Prairie View, he took me to the PB Grumman games. It didn't resonate with me until my freshman year. Texas Southern came to Carter High School and they blew 2001 Space Odyssey. I had never in my life in my life heard anything like that. I was like, I'm going there. Now, this was before I knew about engineering and all that. But then if you can remember back in the day, BET, they used to actually broadcast the football games. So they would show halftime. So then that's when I learned about Southern and Jackson State because they kept playing it. And I used to have this thing, we had this big mirror in my house and I would do JSU Rocks the House like I was part of the band, right? I knew Southern show. I knew everything, that the, the score on the field, the circle drill, right? Not to mention my band director at Carter, his brother was the assistant band director at Southern. So he would send us music. So I was in high school playing Southern's music, okay? But then in 1991, I went to the PV Grambling game and I saw PV. I said, ooh, 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 next year I'm in that band right there. Right. And that's how I got to PV. But that did not mean that I stopped really liking Jackson State or Southern or Texas Southern. So please, people, I love the storm. I do. I swear to you, I love the storm. But we had a show last what well, last season, Critique with Love, and that's what we do. I have them bash the storm. I say where I want the storm to get better. I say the things that I think they're doing correctly. But again, I ride for the storm, but that doesn't mean that I don't like good music. And I don't like good bands. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, I I don't <laughs> want to. <laughs> like, I'm not apologizing. I'm not part of that part of the culture. She's telling them. She's not say, "Get out your feelings. Ain't no money in there." Got your feelings. Got your feelings. Right, man. But anyway, because I'm riding with the storm, please go to Honda Bell of the Bands. It's that time vote for them. I think the deadline is October 31st. We want to see the storm in Atlanta, so please go and do that. And that's all I got. Hopefully they're getting ready for homecoming. I'm not sure if they're going to Lamar. I wouldn't. I would be in Woodshed getting ready for homecoming, so that's what I'm assuming they're doing. But that's all I have. Yeah, I think uh, this is midterms week, so I, I doubt if they travel uh, to Lamar. <clears throat> but I look forward to the homecoming show and I hope I hope they take some of those suggestions. You know, we need that 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 hype band in, in the stands uh, to play some of those standards. Uh, mm -hmm. PV Funk, uh, yeah. the, the Swamp. We need those Please. in the stands. Okay? I want to come in on a little secret. I do know that an alumnus is helping with the show. I, I, that's all I'm going to say. But I mm -hmm. do know that my mind. Uh -oh. helping uh -oh. with the show. So wait, what generation I, alone? Like you talking about like two thousand? That's a difference, right? I remember that too. 
Tupac generation. Right. Or Drake no, generation. I'm just going to say I'm looking forward to it. I trust this young man. He is a young man. He came after me. But I do oh. trust this young man. So um, I'm looking forward okay. to it. I'm looking forward uh, to it. Because remember. I said Tupac or Drake. <laughs> I never heard of no songs, but that makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> it's a drastic difference between, you know, how loosely fit your pants are. <laughs> Oh, are you are you, you snuggy wuggy or you <laughs> loose? <laughs> oh my god! Let, let's point out. I got to point out a statement Mr. Nutter just said. She said, "When it comes to the apologies, I ain't a part of that generation." Oh, there the you culture. go. I ain't a part of that culture. I'm not. That's I don't believe everyone get a trophy. You get a trophy when you show up Ooh. and win Ooh. <laughs> and perform. She said. No. I think people just want, man. It's like you say, you know, the feelings is great, but you know, I mean, it's not well, whatever. But I think folks just want to feel that 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 experience that the storm used to bring you, right? And I think sometimes the anticipation is so high, right? right. We know the storm. We man, they about to get us there. They about to take us there, and then they don't. And it's the the letdown is greater when that anticipation and that buildup is so high. And so I'm, I'm not saying we need to lower our expectations, but um, we do need that kind of balance out a little bit. Let's let's recalibrate yeah. ourselves to what we've been seeing, what we know the storm is going to do and not place all of that anticipation. Because we know look, culturally there's some things that have changed since the nineties, right? We right. don't, they don't, they don't invest the amount of time and energy as they used to do back then. <laughs> and what I don't so, want to do I, is to your point, I agree. I think our expectations are so high that we mm-hmm. can't even appreciate when they do a good job. Right. Right. Yep. So I agree. So, but that's true. Keep blowing. That being, said, <laughs> that being said, I hear songs in the car and on, I'm like, man, this would be a banger if they would, if they could play Al Green play in the stands, some grown folks, Stevie everybody. Wonder. Oh yes. my gosh, Just you cannot miss a Stevie song, man. That, that's it. That's it. Because we can carry that through the time out. It, you know, something that we can carry, even when you stop playing, we still sing it. Yep. Exactly. That's, that's what I want. So, exactly. so Shanetta, holler at your boy and t- give him some of those little breadcrumbs for us. <laughs> All <Yeah>. right. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break and uh, let's come back with uh, Meet Me at the Flagpoles. All right, welcome back. And we are in the I'm So Glad segment. And we have joining us today, the Honorable Judge Beverly Armstrong. How you doing, Your Honor? How are you? Hi, everyone. Hey, hey doing how wonderful. are you? Doing Thanks wonderful. for joining us. So, so uh, PV alum, civil engineering grad. All right, all right. And uh, we understand that you are running for office. I am. I am. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity. Yes, I am running for office. This is my first time running for any type of political position, and I decided to start off running for judge. So I'm running for the 208th Criminal District Court in Harris County. Okay. All right. So, Judge Armstrong, what when you say 208, can you help our listeners understand how that is broken down? What does that mean for, for those Houstonites? So this is a felony level district court. Your district courts are countywide. So my name will be on every ballot in Harris County. If you live in Harris County, my name will be on your ballot and you can definitely vote for me. Now, of course, our ballots along this, this uh, go around. So I'm gonna probably be middle of the way. So we're telling everybody, I'm encouraging everyone, do not get tired, do not get frustrated, start at the top and go all the way down. And remember, you're gonna have to check each box. There's no one button, no, there's no straight ticket voting anymore, but that's okay, we can do it. Just, just stay the course and go from the top to the bottom. All of your judges are pretty much at the bottom and I'm gonna be, like I say, around middle, middle of the way there. 
Okay, and now I know when I go vote, sometimes they give you an option to pick more than one candidate. Are you in one of those uh, areas where there's more than one candidate in your uh, particular for your particular uh, area? Okay, so yes, this is we're in the um, the general election. So I I've already gone through the primary. I had I started off with two primary opponents, and I ended up in a runoff. So I'm past the primary, I'm in the general, but I do have a Republican candidate. So it's gonna be, when you get to my race, the 208, it's going to be uh, both our names. And just so everyone will know, the Republican candidates, their names are first, and then the Democratic candidates. That's because, you know, we have Republican governor, so that's how it works. So for all of the races on this particular slate, you're gonna have a Republican uh, choice and a Democratic candidate. Republicans name gonna be first, Democratic candidates name going to be second and it will say Republican or Democrat. Uh, but those are the, so those are the two that you're going to be picking. It'll be just the two of us uh, in our race. So that's how okay. that's going to work. Mm -hmm. All right, Joe, I'll go to you. Yeah, I got a question for you. So tell us your backstory. How, what led you to Prayer View, engineering, to being an attorney, to running for judge? Wow. Well, I was led to Prairie View. A lot of people might not know this, but my dad is a PV grad. And so it was kind of, it's a family thing or it was a family thing there. So I was led there. I mean, he didn't push it, but you know, there was always the, you know, what about PV? Don't forget to look at PV kind of thing, you know, when I was looking for colleges. And so it was really never uh, other choices for me. So that's how I ended up there. And of course, engineering, I started in the summer program, the ECI program to kind of get me get me started with it um, in civil engineering and just kind of took off from there. Uh, and then interestingly though, to get to law school, I actually had a, um, like that senior some year, I was taking a history class or something and it was a, a, a extra credit thing. I need to go watch for extra credit. And there was some students there doing a mock trial. And that's how I got an interest in law school. Prior to that, I hadn't even considered going to law school. But I stayed for that, obviously talked to the students, did some research. And so I decided that last semester at PV that I was going to eventually go to law school. I didn't go immediately. I graduated. I worked for a little bit at Dow Chemical in Houston. Uh, and then I decided to go to law school. And actually, I continued to work while I was in law school. I went to South Texas in downtown Houston. They had a nighttime or part-time program. And so I was able to work and go to law school at the same time. Uh, and so I did that. And then it just kind of evolved from there. And actually, I was in private practice for a while once I graduated, doing a lot of probate, bankruptcy, family type stuff. And, and it wasn't until a little bit into my career that I started prosecuting. So I have been licensed to practice law for 25 years. Wow. Uh, and I've been doing prosecution for about 16 years. So it's kind of it's kind of been an, an evolution along the way to from where I started to where I am now. But it's been an interesting process, uh, nevertheless. The thing about my experience is that doing all of that and now being prosecuting for 16 years, it's put me in the position where I'm ready for where I'm going. I have all the experience. I've handled all of the cases. You know, guys, I handle the most serious type of cases that you can imagine your murders, your capital murders, your aggravated robberies, and things that you imagine and things that you probably haven't even thought of. Those are things that I have seen over the course of my career. And this particular court, the 208, it handles all of those. So I feel extremely prepared and ready to take on this bench uh, and to be able to handle everything that comes in through that course. And then of course I progress some, I, I'm in a management or supervisory position now uh, I've handled budgets and things of that nature. So I'm able to operate the judicial office, uh, if you will. Uh, so I feel blessed that I've had an opportunity to kind of progress from engineering and the Hill to the prosecutor's office. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that, right? So um, one thing that I don't know if a lot of people know, but engineering majors actually have a higher success rate and to getting into law school than any other major out there. So it's more of a natural progression, which I didn't know that until later on in life, but we mm -hmm. have the best success rate. So for us, we all are affectionately. Yeah, and if you think about it though, go ahead. No, 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 go, go, go ahead. Uh -oh. I'm saying, well, if you, you think about it, the, the way it, it's, it's so intense 
and it prepares you for we're doing all this math we're doing all this analytical thinking and things of that nature and when you get to law school it's a lot of reading it's still a lot of analytical thinking and applying those those skills that we've already spent all these years being trained for and ready for and so it, it's an easy transition over that um and then i didn't follow this path but uh, but most people probably know that with the engineering degree you can go into patent law, so which was my original plan, but I changed courses. But anyway, um, and patent law is one of the areas where the only area where you need to have a science background to go into that area of law. You can do just about anything else with any type of background, but to be a patent lawyer, you need to have some type of science background. So a lot of engineers, they go to law school with the plan to go into the patent law area. Uh, and I, that was my plan, but I decided I wanted to do something else, obviously. So I didn't go that route. <laughs> so for us, you, you have an, you've already affectionately won us, right? From a number of different reasons. We have PV alum. We have, um, uh, there's a, a wonderful organization called Epsilon Gamma Iota that we also, um, have Alpha Kappa Alpha, right? So obviously you've won us over pretty strongly, right? Now, for those folks, you've already told us kind of like your, your pedigree and how you got to where you are, but what kind of um, balance of power are you looking to bring to the, to the bench, if you will, if elected? I, I want to bring a sense of um, fairness to the bench. And what I mean by that is that I want to be able to take cases, look at everything and make rulings that are just, just, for our parties. Justice is not one-sided. It is not one size fits all. And, and let me kind of let me explain that. I may have five different cases on my desk that's aggravated robberies, but the facts of each one is different. The parties are different. The way that has affected their lives is different. And that tells me, and what I've learned is that the outcome, the outcome should be different. What is justice for one defendant or one a person who's been assaulted or one family that's lost a loved one through a violent crime is different from another. And if you don't have an open mind, if you're not willing to look at the circumstances with compassion, with integrity, with fairness, to try to find a solution that is the right solution for all, then we miss the mark on doing what needs to be done. Uh, I am a strong believer that there are some people that simply needs help. And I believe our justice system can and should be willing to look at avenues and opportunities to help people get on their feet so they can provide for their families, so they can become productive citizens, so they can make a difference in their lives and the lives of their children, their family, things of that nature. And I believe that. On the other hand, I also believe that there are some people who are just so dangerous, who are just so mean, if you will, or just have such evil, so to speak, in their heart that they simply cannot walk among us. And we need a justice or someone that is strong enough to recognize that and do what needs to be done. It needs to be balanced. It cannot be one size fits all. That simply does not work. And so that's what I want to bring. I want to bring a, a balance of fairness, a sense of integrity, grace and mercy and all of that so that at the end of the day, when someone leaves out of 208, they feel like they might not have gotten what they wanted, but they feel like they got what is just and fair. Cause there's a difference. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, we know that the, uh, the judiciary in, in the country as a whole has kind of come under fire. Um, and the thing that the, the thing that they need in order to stay, um, I won't say relevant, but <clears throat> in order for us to have faith in the judiciary is, like you said, that sense of fairness and not that justice for thee and not for me. Uh, mm -hmm. So how, how do you strike that balance between, you know, because this is an elected position. So, of course, you've got you've got to get elected and then hopefully reelected. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance the needs of uh, maybe um, giving those who voted for you exactly what they wanted versus doing what you feel is right if those two ever come into conflict? Well, here's the thing, and this is what I tell everyone, what you want 
is a judge that's going to follow the law. And, and that's every judge is charged. That's the oath that you take. We have to follow the law. You, and remember, judges don't make laws. We don't make them. But we have to follow them, whether we like them or not. There's some discretion that might be able to be made, maybe a little bit of room to do, make some adjustments. But ultimately, the law has to be followed because that's our charge. And so the way I, I, I tend to address that is to be able to follow the law based on what I'm seeing and use my discretion to make it fit with what is before me. So I can give you, if, if I have time, let me give you a couple examples. For example, I, as a, as a prosecutor, I've had, I had a case where we had a young, she was very young, a young, a young lady, a young mother. She, she had actually two kids, but she, she was young. Her mother had died. She had no family, no support, and she was not doing a good job with these kids. And so I had multiple cases on her for child endangerment. And she was looking at prison time. I mean, that, because it, it, it was really a bad case. But in my opinion, that wasn't the right place. There wasn't the right place. How was that going to help her? And if she had gone to prison, the children were going to go into the system. She would lose her kids. She already had lost her mother. I mean, it was just a bad situation. And so what else can be done? What, what else will the law allow us to do? And so I got with the defense attorney. We started making some, uh, doing some calls. I got with the probation, uh, my probation department, and we found a program for her where she could take her kids, so she got to keep them, she could get parenting skills, job skills, a home where she could stay, a housing, to do better. So instead of sending her to prison, this was part of her probation uh, agreement so that she could get better. So that's what I mean by you using the law. That was all part of the law. That was an option, but you use that to fit the circumstances that is in front of you. And so, and so, of course, that's me as a prosecutor. How that translates to a judge is that you have to have a judge that's open-minded enough to accept that idea because even though I came up with it and the defense attorney came up with it, we had to get the approval of the judge. And so you want a judge who is open-minded enough to say that's a great idea or to even look for other alternatives and say, what about this? What about that? So that, that, that's just one example of what I mean by you, we're going to use the law because I have to, but there's going to be some discretion and we'll be able to, you know, get people where they need to be. Absolutely. And to all our listeners, that is why you want to select the judges who think like you think with an open mind and not just heavy handed, trying to throw this book around, the book of the law around willy nilly. So I can appreciate that answer. And that that speaks to why it is important for us to not just focus on the top of the ballot, but do your homework, go all the way through that ballot, because the folks that will have some influence on your day to day life are generally towards the bottom of the ballot. The ones at the top, you know, every now and again, they'll do something that may impact your day to day life. But the folks that you will interact with most often are the judges, the prosecutors, uh, you know, so we have to vote down ballot. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And we have to encourage voters to vote in midterm elections. You can't just wait and only vote when it's the presidential election because the midterm elections have a huge impact on our daily lives also. That's where people get into office that changes the laws, that changes what's happening to us every day. So you cannot wait until the pre uh, presidential election to say, okay, I'm going to vote now. You need to really vote in these midterm elections so you can get the right people in your state, uh, state senates, your Congress, your uh, and your judges, everything. Everyone is important, and you cannot overlook these these midterm elections. So please, please send that message out to everyone. All right, thank Attorney you. Armstrong, we, we thank you for joining us. Uh, we look forward to you being sworn in here uh, as we get towards the end of the year. So of course, you, are actually, you absolutely have our support and PV listeners, PV fam, let's get out and, and vote for Attorney Armstrong for that uh, 208 uh, district for, uh, for judge. All right. Early voting. And early voting starts October. When Second, is early voting? Voting starts 
Early voting starts October 24th and runs through November 4th. And then election day is November 8th. I strongly encourage everyone to vote early voting. Get it, get out there, beat the lines, take family, take friends, and early vote. So October 24th through November 4th. All so right. Vote before homecoming. Vote before you step foot on campus. Yes. On <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Have that plan. And it's so important. Everyone go vote. Vote from the top to the bottom. And uh, and just let your voice be heard on every, every, every race. We need you. I'm going to just step out there and say vote Democrat from the top to the bottom. Let's do it. Because we need it from Beto to the bottom. We have to get keep this blue. We have to keep protecting our family. There you go. You heard it here. And we'll be right back with the We Ready shout outs. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. We are back for the We Ready shout outs. We got a shout out. I actually have a shout out. All right. Oh. I want to give a shout out to, we didn't talk about this yet, but so basketball is about to start out, start. But I do, definitely want to give a shout out to Jeremiah Gambrell. I hope I'm saying that right, that last name right. But he was named to the preseason SWAG all conference second team. So he is ready. He ready. He, he, he ready. ready. Right. Anybody else got one? I got one. Some more folks, some more uh, of our people running for office. Let's get their names out there real quick. In Mississippi, uh, Senator uh, running for Senator Hillman Frazier in the 27th District in the Mississippi State Senate. Uh, we also got Representative Christopher Bell, District 65 in the Mississippi House of Rep Representatives. Folks out there in Mississippi, get your vote on, man. Y'all got too many of our brothers and sisters in that state without proper representation. Uh, also, North Carolina, we got Cherry Beasley running for office in North Carolina. Oklahoma, we got T.W. Shannon running for Oklahoma in a runoff with Representative uh, Mark Wayne Mullen for Senator. So, SWAC, our SWAC folks, our HBCU family, get your vote on. Y'all best to be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. <laughs> All right, Shanetta, you gonna take us out of here? All right. BV. You, you know. know? Why do y'all wait? I don't understand the pause. <laughs> I, think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm, it is. I'm, I'm listening because I don't want to be early because y'all always say I'm early. <laughs> I got nothing on that one. I got nothing. Oh, <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it. All right. We out. All right. All right. Everybody want to be ready, but we ain't ready. We ain't ready. <laughs> we ain't ready. <laughs>